What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video. As you see from the title today, we actually have our Oak Hill team breakdown. Uh, if you guys with these team breakdowns, you remember I started with Montverde. They had players like Dylan Mitchell, uh, Derek Queen, Kwame Evans, uh, Hood Shafino. And then we just recently did IMG's team breakdown. Players like Keontae, Eric Daly, Jarris Walker, Jaden Bradley. Uh, who else did they have? They had uh, somebody else, Jet Howard, right? Players like that. So now we're coming with the Oak Hill team breakdown. And like I said in the IMG video, I knew I had to come with this one because, you know, at first I, was, I wasn't sure if I was even going to do it because, you know, I was reading up. I read up on a couple high school teams before City of Palms even happened, just thinking about doing team breakdowns in the future. So when I was reading up on Oak Hill, I saw even their fans were saying, oh, yeah, this is a down year, a down year for Oak Hill. We have no shot to even make it to the uh, to the championship Geico Nationals, much less compete for it. Right. Or I'm seeing Chris Livingston isn't living up to his ranking. He doesn't really look as good as he should be this, this and that. But then when I turn on this City of Palms game, Oak Hill versus IMG and I'm watching him play and I'm like, wait, um, you know, the talent doesn't look to be too far apart from IMG. And I'm pretty sure IMG coming into City of Palms was ranked the number one team, national high school team in the country. So I'm looking, I'm like, well, the talent doesn't look to be that different. And Chris Livingston is hooping and they got this one player, number 24, who's who looks really good, like really good. So I'm not sure. And then if you guys didn't know, Oak Hill actually did end up beating IMG, which kind of solidified, okay, forget what I read. Like, you know, cause maybe they didn't watch the right game, this, this, and that. I'm like, okay, we're going to do this breakdown because these dudes are hooping this game. Uh, shout out to them for, you know, beating the run at the time, the number one uh, high school team in the country. But I'm about to show you guys how they did that. I'm not going to hold you guys up any longer. Oak Hill versus Iron. The number 13 ranked player in the class of 2023 and do commit Caleb Foster is a solid shooter. Leave him open. He can knock it down. Great job here by Kentucky signee Chris Livingston, recognizing Jarris going under the screen and raising up the bucket. Judah Mintz is the 43rd ranked player in the class of 2022 and is a guard that can score in a number of ways, one of which is getting to his pull-up. Caleb Foster did a great job here, drawing defensive attention on the dribble drive and throwing a great pass to an open Chris Livingston from three. But Chris doesn't only shoot threes, he also does a pretty good job putting the ball on the floor, getting by defenders, and finishing at the rim. Okio has a bunch of talented players that people might not know about yet, one of which is Tybo Bailey. Here he is hitting this tough pull-up, currently holding a bunch of high major offers in the class of 2024. As I said before, Judah Mintz can not only get it done with his jumper, he can also convert tough contested finishes at the rim. Caleb Foster is similar in that once he gets downhill, he knows how to use his body to create contact to finish. Great read by Mintz here after taking the bump from Keontae, making the pass to 7'1", Christian Reeves. Good job by him as well, staying with the play and finishing the lay. He's also committed to Duke. As I said before, at his size, once Chris Livingston decides to go downhill, he's extremely tough to stop, and it's going to end one or two ways when he does decide to go that way. He's either going to finish the lay or he's going to dunk it on your head. Lee Foster over from three, it's gone, and more times than not, it's most likely going to go in, but he's not only limited to being a spot shooter. If you put him in pick and roll situations or even in isos, he has no problem getting his defender off balance, getting to his pull-up, and knocking it down. Oak Hill has another high major recruit with LSU signee and the current 96 ranked player in the class of 2022, Devin Ree. Here he is. Great job contorting his body for the tough lay. Judah Mintz is a truly underrated guard who can score the ball on all three levels, as you're going to see here, getting to his mid-range pull-up. And on these next two consecutive possessions, you're going to see even in transition situations, he does a great job finishing through contact around the rim with either hand, getting the and one on this second finish. Chris Livingston had done a great job working on his three-point shot, now able to knock it down from deep off the bounce. But as you're going to see here, OK also has another bigger player who can stretch the floor. Here's 6'7", four-star Justin McBride knocking down the open three as well. Judah Mintz see the deal on an extremely hard-fought win for Oak Hill, converting this tough finish through contact with only two seconds left. Okay, so Oak Hill, again, shout out to them for beating the, at the time, number one high school team in the country. And if you guys know the type of players that IMG has on that roster, that's an extremely tough win. Like Jairus in that game was hooping. Keontae, I think he finished with like 26 or something like that. So they didn't get these dudes off nights. Like they got, they got one of their best shots and they still ended up winning. There's a reason why, you know, we'll talk about 
the you know the main two reasons why they won, the main two players why they won. We'll talk about that at the end. But first, of course, you know this is a team breakdown, so we are going to talk about the players that people might not know about. Maybe they aren't the five stars, but they still might have three, four stars. They're still Division One basketball players, but since they aren't like marquee names, things like that, a lot of people don't know who they are. So we'll just start with them, right? First, I got it pulled up right now just so I can like know exactly what their rankings are, where they're going, things like that. We'll start with the center, of course, because I'm the center. I really did actually didn't really know about this kid, Christian Reeves, seven foot. Now in their offense, it doesn't look like he's utilized a lot. And that's understandable with the type of talent they have at the guard position at the wing. So like I said, it's understandable. But like I always say, like they, you can't teach size. I don't care. Like when anybody says, oh, you can teach them all these moves, da, 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 da. You can't teach somebody to be seven feet. Like you cannot teach that and more times than not a person who's that tall, you know, if they if they're working, if they're serious about it, they are going to get a chance. So him being committed to Duke, you know, he didn't really do a lot in that game, but that was a great job on the glass. I saw him get a lot of big rebounds. Even when he got blocked, he still went right back up, get the hook so I can see he has the touch. I think he made a couple, you know, maybe one or two, maybe post moves, just light hooks. So it looks like he has that base, especially at Duke with that training and things like that. Put some weight on going to be a really solid basketball player. We'll move on to uh, Justin McBride. 6'7", power forward. You saw him knock down the three. You know, at this side, they are 24-7. They have him ranked at uh, number 122. But he has a Kansas offer. He has a bunch of, you know, high major offers. So at that size, he's listed as a power forward. He looks that on the court, you know what I'm saying? But it, his shot looks fluid, comes off easily. Again, he's one of those players, kind of like Reeves. He wasn't featured as much in the offense. But you can still tell, like, the talent, especially at that size. He put it down a couple times, made some good passes. Like I said, he wasn't really out there trying to rock out because who else they had on the team. But still, he knocked down open threes. Big time. You know what I'm saying? This is also going to be a pretty solid player. Then we have Tybo Bailey, who is actually in the class of 2024. So the number four for Oak Hill is in the class of 2024, playing up against, playing up against all these dudes. Uh, not that aren't, you know what I'm saying? These aren't young IMG. You got Keontae, who's a senior. Jairus is a senior. And Jairus, grown man, like grown man, like kind of like Jalen Duren. They're going into college pretty much with, you know, their bodies are already ready for the contact, things like that. Extremely impressive to see him. He's not currently ranked because he is, you know, so young, but he does all, already have offers. You saw he hit that tough pull up. And you, I'm starting to see, you know what I'm saying? All these, these guards like that. The pass first, you know, it's been happening for a while, but that pass first type of guard, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of going away. You're going to see, you're starting to see a lot, a lot more combos, dudes that can just get it off the bounce. And I'm seeing on all these top teams, almost every guard, or even at the prep level, you know, today we're actually going to play a FSW number 20 ranked Juco in the country and just watch a film on them. All these guards that I'm starting to see is da -da -da, like everybody got step backs, everybody, everybody got everything. So just impressive to see this next evolution on the game. So I'm excited to see, especially him, being able to compete at such a high level at such a young age. That's big time. Next, we'll get into Devin Reed, 6'7". Uh, LSU commit. You saw him make that tough drive baseline again. You know, he's currently actually ranked number 96 in the ESPN 100. Maybe he didn't have the best game this, uh, you know what I'm saying, this outing because there weren't like really a lot of clips of him in the full game film. But you did see him make that tough layup contorting his body. And at his size, at 6'7". I'm sure he can probably knock down the open three. I didn't see it, but uh, like you could already tell, he can already put it down. And like I just said, he is acrobatic with his finishes and things like that. We will, um, I, He is committed to LSU. And if you guys didn't know, like I always say, I was born in Louisiana. So LSU was my, you know, that was my dream school coming out. High school, things like that. It didn't happen, but since he's going to LSU, I'll probably still give him a look. Um, but now let's get into these three. These three players that were, you know, pretty much one of the major reasons why Oak Hill did end up taking down, the, at the time, the number one high school basketball, national high school basketball team in the country, right? It's Caleb Foster, Chris Livingston, Judah Mintz. We'll talk about Chris and Judah last. We'll talk about Caleb Foster first because, you know, with Caleb, if you guys didn't know, this is currently the number 13 ranked player in the class with 23. He's committed to Duke. But with Caleb, this, this was actually my first introduction to Caleb Foster. This is a guard, point guard that, you know, that's been commented on the channel a couple of times. I've been, you know, waiting to get my hands on some film to really come with this breakdown. So this was my first time actually watching them. A lot of you guys have started to ask me already, who do you guys think is the best, who do I think the best guard is in the class of 2023, whether it be Caleb or Rob or Mikey, players like that. I've, like you guys have been asking that question, but I've been waiting to answer it because I hadn't seen him yet. So just to see him here, 
again, playing against high level competition on a high level stage in City of Palms. And he's producing. I can already tell, just, just like I said, this is my first time watching him. We are actually going to come with his full game breakdown so I can actually see like everything you know he can do. But I'm watching him. He's knocking down his pull-ups. He's knocking down his open three. So it looks like he can knock down. You know, he's a pretty good shooter, whether that be set or, like I said, off the bounce. Or even if he gets in one-on-one -on -one situations, he knows how to, he can snatch and get to his pull-up at any time. You know, so he can score the basketball. He also does a great job attacking the rim, things like that. Not to mention, he also makes pretty good pass, passes, pretty good reads. And I can already tell, you know, just how IMG was guarding him. Just how, like, he was, it almost seemed like he was one of their focal points from the jump. Even every time he drives, he has everybody looking at him, which has allowed him to make, you know, great passes out to Chris Livingston for open threes or for open teammates that, you know, many people might not know about. But giving them an opportunity to show what they can do just by him drawing so much attention with his dribble drives and things like that. Like I said, we are going to come with this breakdown and this full breakdown so I can really get a full feel of how good he is and then compare him, of course, to some of the other top guards in his class. But let's just get into Chris. So when I first saw Chris, we did his breakdown a while ago. I think we did when he played on the Adidas circuit. I think he played on We All Can Go. Right at the time, I'm looking at him, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, I can see he's a freak athlete. You can go watch that breakdown. He's hitting turnaround jumpers, things like that. I can still see that. You know, because in that, I watched that full game when he was playing on, on Adidas circuit. And he'd hit a three, and then he'd airball a three. Or he'd, you know what I'm saying, or he'd hit a really tough mid-range pull-up, or he'd shoot another, like, pull-up, and it hit, like, the other side of the glass. So I could see at the time, like, yeah, this dude can shoot, but it's more streaky. It's not really consistent. But in this game, what I'm seeing from him, when he came out the gate, I was surprised because I'm like, wait, this isn't, this isn't the same player that I saw a while ago. Because he's shooting the ball confidently off the bounce. And he's taking a whole lot of jumpers and a whole lot of jumpers. And he's making them not, you know what I'm saying, like really like, oh, he banked it in, stuff like that. No, he's really hitting mostly net, barely any rim. So he's really been working on that part of his game. And as you saw, once he starts hitting that, all of a sudden, people start stepping up. And because he's a freak athlete, this dude can get downhill so easily. And once he gets to the rim, there aren't many players, especially at his size, like I just said, with his athleticism. That can stop him at the rim. He's getting wide open layups. And you saw he has he's this way. Oh, rejects the ball screen, goes downhill, two hands, power. Like, that's tough. Like, this dude, you know what I'm saying? Where is he currently ranked? He's currently ranked number 12 in the class of 2022. You know, he, this game right here, especially against that top talent, that's probably going to open some eyes, you know, especially when they try and um, come with these final, these final class rankings. But Judah Mintz, you know, this is a player that what's crazy is, a couple months ago, when I was really doing, when the, you know what I'm saying, the summer sessions were really, you know, starting to get going, EYBL, Adidas, right? I got this comment on the channel and it was saying, and it said like, yeah, um, can you react to my, I think it was, he was saying like my brother or something like that, Judah Mintz, like he's, he's killing EYBL. And at the time when I first saw it, I'm like, yeah, like I looked him up a little bit. I'm like, yeah, you know, he's putting up decent numbers. You know, but I was waiting to see, okay, this, is somebody else going to comment his name? Like, is someone else going to, does anybody else really want to see him or know about him? Things like that. And I was still going to come, I was still going to come with this breakdown, but I think I got distracted and forgot about it. Like I said, it was just one comment. So now to come and see him now on Oak Hill. And I can honestly say, yeah, Chris Livingston played a big part. Chris Livingston was hooping, but this dude right here really opened my eyes, especially since they only have him ranked as number 43 in the class of 2022. And the way Keontae was like really guarding, shifting his feet, doing everything. IMG was really trying to stop this dude, but he's still getting to where he wants to on the court. He's getting in the paint whenever he wants, whenever he wants, and he's taking all the bumps because you know IMG was being extremely physical with him. He's taking all the bumps, still finishing through contact. He's knocking down open shots. He's getting to his pull up. I, I wish I could find that comment if I can. I'm gonna show it right here. But I'm pretty sure his brother said he was averaging I don't want to say a number just in case I'm wrong, but he was averaging, I'm pretty sure, it was above 20 at the time on the EYBL circuit. Like I always say, EYBL is no cupcake, you know, no, no cupcake circuit. So you know he was hooping. So now it's just great to see this now. I don't know if he's from what I just saw in that game. I don't know if there are 42 players, you know, better than this kid. We've gone through a couple of the players that are above him. Uh, Jed is Jet Howard on IMG's 41. Arterio's 31. These are some of the players that we've done before. I still uh, got to do Anthony Black, players like that. But I'm not sure if there are 42 players better than this kid. We might actually have to go back and do his EYBL breakdown, or at least I'm going to go watch 
just to see what type of performances he was really putting up. But all in all, again, shout out to Oak Hill for beating an extremely tough IMG team who was hooping. Again, IMG wasn't really having, yeah, okay, they missed a couple shots, but most of their star players came to play. You didn't get their off nights. All these dudes were hooping. This is an extremely high level battle. I think Oak Hill only won by like two or three, maybe four. So again, shout out to them. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the you know, the one-on-one -on -one evaluations, the subscriber breakdowns that get posted on the channel, just like this video, hit my website. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time with the next video.